If you heard anything about me, you will know I am a see a need, meet the need kind of person. Mm -hmm. This is why technology came to the school that I was working in because there was no tech program before I got there. And this is why Rebrand Land has come to be. I am the individual that said, all right, we need to fix this. How do we fix it? Right? I realized that I wanted to be able to provide resources to our community that they did not have to pay for. So literally everything that I could find online, I put into a directory. So if you head to our nonprofit's website, it's how it's expanded. If you head to our nonprofit's website, we have a resource hub with over 250 resources, any kind of business you can think of, and a space where you can request that someone find the information for you. I want to know how to break into the gaming industry. Well, we had to do research on that. And now it's on our website as a step-by-step guide on how to break into gaming. Wow. Right? So we, we are constantly updating that hub. It's a piece of our virtual option that we offer. Um, but then moving into now, okay, yes, we got the information, but how do we sustain? Because I don't want to just build a business that I'm going to die with and there's nothing else that happens. As soon as something you know happens to me, there's no more rebrand land. That doesn't make any sense to me. Which is why rebrand land is the way it is right now. This idea of the main character is that you are the center of your story. And no matter how many stories you play a part in, your story still exists, right? So no longer hiding behind the shadows and, and being somebody else's supporting character. How are you going to support your own life and your own pathway? So we like to provide you with a full team for your project, however it looks. We start off with a strategy phase that looks like you sit down with me for at least three sessions, but we have executives here that are the tops of their field that are going to be hands on with your project. We have marketing, we have production, we have design, we have the, the strategy individuals, we're um, bringing on influencer marketing as well. All of this on, uh, with the idea that you can sustain your business. And now adding that piece of financial literacy because you get to talk to our CFO executive, you learn about accounting, you learn about taxes, all of that, which I didn't know when I was just printing t-shirts. I didn't know what someone had to track the money that I was making. Right. So I wanted to make sure that everything that my clients got or get right now, they don't have to search for like I did. I would say, I think a big player with that is this, my life start, right? Mm -hmm. I started in this world with incredible odds, not just environment where I was raised, but even my own birth itself, I was what they pronounced as a miracle baby, born with a 50-50 chance of life. Wow. Um, had a defective heart valve, had to go into, you know, heart surgery at the age of four hours old, right? So when I was told about, you know, the premature birth I had, and I was raised with like, hey, you know, you truly were a blessing mm -hmm. as in, you just had, you had the eyes as, just as much to live is to, you know, to perish. Wow. And so having that mindset growing up, knowing my story, this with life, really prepared me for any odds, the things I faced. And they continue to come my way, right? Many different odds from either it be things that actually directly affected toward my own livelihood mm -hmm. of if I would live or die. So, you know, what opportunities were there for me to take advantage of, to accelerate educationally, professionally, socially, right? You know, I've always had to be strategic in mind to understand what things are certain, what things are not. And ultimately going back to what we talked about before is, you know, I have a certain vision. You know, the Lord really had a purpose for me exactly. because I wouldn't be here. Because yeah. there's too many times that I could have been taken away. Mm. You know, so anything that I deal now with, it's just, it's so, you know, in comparison to what I've been through, it's minuscule, right? Wow. These are just the simple challenges that many people might take to heart sometimes, right? Like, wow, I didn't get that promotion. Oh, you know, someone spied me with this. Someone's not really supporting me in this way, right? But, you know, to truly say your greatest obstacle in life was really death and you overcame it, wow. I think you start to look at life a lot differently. Yes. So the overall business is to give a platform to other black businesses to allow them to continue to grow and scale and monetize and take advantage of the online system that we have. So social media and even on online on websites. Mm -hmm. As we know, the world is going towards more digital, whether we For like sure. it or not, especially after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to have a social media if you want to be taken seriously on oh, business. Yeah. You have to have a website if you want to be taken seriously on business. You have to have a, an online brand because a lot of people that are not going to your store or a lot of businesses are run strictly online, For similar sure. to us. So our goal is really to give a platform to other black businesses, black owned businesses, and allow them to take advantage of that opportunity because there's so many target audience that they could be reaching, so many of their potential customers that they could be reaching if they were to be taking advantage of these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And at SWC, we want to help them take full advantage of that and 
leverage those monetary opportunities as much as possible. And whether that be for the monetary or just to get your brand and your, your association, your affiliation out there. So I want you to share with us just some tips that you would give other young men who are thinking about starting a business in college, because it sounds like to me, you were able to pivot into different community initiatives that helped you to get out there and learn what your peers needed. So what is some advice that you would give others who are interested in starting a business? For people that are interested in starting a business, I would say first and foremost, you have to find something that you're passionate about, I think. And I understand that that's a waning, that could be a waning thing to think about or base something off of. But if you don't enjoy it and you have to wake up every day and doing it, it's going to be like having a regular job. You're not going to yeah. enjoy it. It's just going to be straight work and work and work. And it is straight work. And it's not, you know, I know we people can make it look flashy. You're always traveling and you got a lot of money. And right. You're always buying the newest thing. You're always doing stuff. But no, it, it's really a, a hustle. It's really many more hours sitting at that desk by yourself and it's, you're supposed to be in bed everybody else is out partying mm -hmm. and i spent a lot of time doing that after i gave up mostly you know going out and partying and celebrating mm -hmm. i was in my room a lot working on my business my friends would come to my door they would be like hey we're about to go to the bar we're mm -hmm. gonna go get a drink and i'm like no i gotta focus on this wow like, no, you're so you're so lame you're so wow. you don't even do go out anymore mm -hmm. so find something that you're passionate about that's going to keep you focused when your distractions are going to come and also you need to find something that you're actually good at. And if you have a skill set, you can leverage that and monetize that and turn that into a business. Mm -hmm. So for me, my skill set was creating digital content. So because I had developed my skill set in creating digital content to the point where people were willing to exchange that value for currency. And once they started to do that, I was able to build systems and a brand. And I was able to leverage that to the point where now the business can more so sustain itself rather than me having to do every individual aspect of the business just like that simple verse from matthew's like the first shall be last the last shall be first wow. it's just like he's like my timing has this perfecting nature to it mm. so i need you to slow down Ooh. and i don't need you to question everything i'm doing Come i don't on. need you to use logic i don't need you to reason i need you to be obedient and even too it's just like obedience like is success you know successful is hey can you allow me to lead you even if you disagree you can be totally pissed about it too just you can be so upset. You can cry about it, baby girl. And guess what? I'm still holding your hand. And we're still going to walk this through. And I guess that's a part of where, like, patience, you know, as a fruit of the spirit. And so growing patience over the years, like, it's this constant conversation you're having with yourself where it's like, don't rush. No, so it's just crazy just how you have to flip your whole value system, really, to be obedient um, and also be cheerful about it as well. You know what I mean? Not in, like, a bad way where it's just like, Every day I wake up and I'm ready to do the Lord's work. It's like, no, it's, it's like, it's like 50% of time. Another 50% is like, I really don't want to do this, but here we go. It's a matter of just like, you know what? But based off the vision that he showed me, right? So I'm in sociology, but he showed me a vision my freshman year. Okay, cool. I'm still going to continue, but he showed me the vision. It's like this back and forth. It's also like the way that I view it. It's almost like this pendulum where like, as I swing back, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm a sociology major, I still have this vision. Then it may come crashing down one day, but it still bounces off the vision that he gave me, right? So I'll never go past the point of where I doubt what he says, or I go past the point of where I'm like, okay, now I'm going in reverse. But it's like, okay, I'm not playing high today, bounce back, and it's what he said. But it's just a matter of, it's like, okay, that's what the reality of waiting looks like, and that's what the reality of obedience looks like. It's not always sexy, it's not always desirable, but like you said, there's gonna be a season where he makes it so clear. And that produces so much gratitude. Yes. And you wanna trust him even more. And you're like, hey, actually your timing is beautiful and actually your timing is your form of kindness. Um, while down there in school, I ended up working at a comedy club. And that it was kind of my passion. That's why I started working there. And one thing led to another. Uh, I ended up running the club for a couple of years. And then I, I, when the club sort of, you know, I lost the contract, the club closed down, I, I sort of eased my way into stand-up comedy. And so for the next probably 10, 12 years, I was a stand-up comic. And I was, you know, on the road, traveling around, doing my thing. And um, and then I land, I, I got on a Comic View and, 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 and Showtime with Apollo, things started to percolate and I decided to, you know, uh, take my talents uh, to Los Angeles. And so I came out here and, you know, I was doing stand-up. I started writing, acting, and things of that nature. So you start meeting people and 
you know, you start getting your, your feet wet, so to speak. And so I had done a show on this Fox series called Murder in Small Town X. It was a short lived series. And uh, a buddy of mine on the show, we, we got together. I was writing, he was writing, and we ended up writing a script. And a few years later, I'm making it very condensed. And a few years later, uh, a buddy of mine named Kai Pfeiffer, who was a you know, successful actor, he, he and I decided to team up. And we ultimately got the film made. It was called Puff Puff Pass. And, you know, it, 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 did, it, did, it went straight to DVD, but it did very well. You know, um, we had Terry Crews in it. Um, yeah, LeVan Davis was in it uh, from House of Pain. I mean, we had, you know, uh, several people. Makai was in it, I was in it. Uh, Danny Masterson from the 70s show was in it, several people. Um, and so it kind of got a little bit of a steam. You know, we, we, we got a little deal with Warner Brothers after that. And then next thing you know, we came across a project called This Christmas. And, you know, we got on board with that project. And that, you know, that's done very well over the years. But that's what led me down the road into the film genre, so to speak. You know, over the course of the last, you know, 15, 20 years of being in that particular place, I've just sort of created, you know, other opportunities for myself. And so, you know, here I sit now, you know, so we, we just you know, last year had a film come out on BET Plus called Unfinished. It did very well on the platform. And I have another film that's in post-production right now that hopefully will probably land somewhere maybe on BET, All Black, or one of the networks. So, you know, we're just out here grinding, you know. We got some other things percolating, you know, always coals in the fire, you know, you're trying to catch as many as many a flame as you can possibly. Sometimes what appears to be nice and neat and safe ain't really the answer. Right? So so for me, it wasn't just a, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go do this. That's not it alone. It was, a, it was a constant thing, man, that I was, you know, going back and forth with. And that's what led me closer to my faith. I got more into my meditation practices um, because I had to dig deep in order to, so if I'm gonna survive, God gonna tell you exactly what you're supposed to do, but you gotta be listening. And the only way you can listen is you gotta go inside and clear the muck out. You got to clear all this stuff away. You got to clear, you know, away what you, you, maybe your mom and daddy told you. Maybe you got to clear away what your teachers told you or whomever. You know, some, sometimes, but sometimes you keep it too. I'm not saying, you know, you don't listen to folks, but if it ain't for you, then it's against you. So you got to clear that noise away. And that's that's not, it's not easy. Because see, you, you got a voice in your head that, that, that sometimes is lying to you. And you think it's you. You know, you think, you think, you really believe this voice that that's you and it's not. A lot of people have no idea how much work it takes. You know, they see the glitz and glam and they see the success, but I'd love for you to share with us some of the obstacles that you faced getting into your career and some of the challenges that you may have had to overcome. Great question. Yeah, everything that glitters isn't gold. You, you, you said it. It's, it's tough. It's. If you want to be in the sports industry, I, I love to be transparent when it comes to this, especially the up and coming young professionals wanting to break into the industry and whatnot. It's a lot of long nights, no weekends. It's holidays, you're working. Holidays, you're at the game. Thanksgiving, you're at the game. But Christmas, you're at the game. My birthday, I was born on Christmas Eve. I worked on my birthday. We play again this year, Miami Dolphins. So on my birthday. So it's like, you've got to be that's how much you've got to want to be in it. You, you got to know that you're sacrificing some of your time. But at the same breath, you, you will be able to have the opportunities to invite your people in, to invite your family and friends in. So that way, yeah, it may be Thanksgiving, but at least I get, I get to, for instance, me personally, I was able to invite my family to the Dallas Cowboys game last year for Thanksgiving. Yes, I had to work, but just knowing that they were in the suite with there with me, I'm able to share those moments. So just remember the fact that, yeah, you're gonna be a lot of times, especially young, when you're grinding, you're interning, you're, you're, you're just putting in that work and that effort. And then finally, you're gonna hit that other side to where it's like, wow, look at me, I, I, I did it, I made it. And then you're gonna feel like, oh, let's keep it going. And it's not a matter of, of burnout or whatnot. You wanna avoid that for sure. Pay attention to your body, pay attention to everything. 
but just be aware that yes, it's long nights, it's long hours, it's weekends, it's 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 all of that. However, you're you're a part of changing the experience for someone else. You're in part of enhancing that moment for somebody. If you've got that about you of where wow, I just want to help be a part of somebody's lifelong experience. If you got that about you, you'll be able to to withstand the long nights, the weekends and all of that. Yeah. I so there's tons of obstacles. Everybody should know that and you nailed it. It it definitely doesn't come easy. Persistence and the ability to adapt quickly, I think are the key markers for success. Uh and notice I'm not saying you have to have this much money or have this education or nothing like that. It's like I I think the difference between a lot of successful entrepreneurs and and those who aren't is just they chose not to stop. Maybe something's broken in our heads, we just keep running. Um so that's just something that I would encourage and you nailed it. It requires faith. You have to believe in, you know, what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, and obviously depending on, you know, how you were raised as well. There's <laughs> that's how I was raised. I was raised in a Christian home, so I mean that that type of faith as well is certainly certainly helpful when you're going through, you know, really really hard times. Um but I I I think three core things just to keep it bulletized one is how do you sell or find new leads mm-hmm. and recognizing the irony that I run a marketing and business growth agency right now there's a couple different ways you can you can cold call you can cold email you can go door to door you can try to win one business at a time and you can wing it um what I chose to do that I if you can apply this you know any listeners to your industry is provide free value because if you're in a service industry typically your time is your value and your expertise is your value so and and instead of just doing that on a business to business level thinking again putting our scalability hats on what i did instead is i went to other agencies who work with people that i want to work with and so yeah in this example i went to web design firms all we did was traffic services right driving leads we didn't do web design most people create websites to be found and they want to generate business more than often you know more often than not so i went to those folks and i was like you know anybody you work with i will give them a free strategy session free seo analysis you know that's all we did at that time we do far more now um and and that tended to work and so maybe out of 20 people a month now i'm meeting people which i couldn't do on my own very easily especially in 2020 era and you know you know those sorts of things And so I'm, I'm meeting people. They already know that I'm giving them something of value. So there's trust there, and there's this psychological rule of reciprocity where it's like, man, you just spent time with me and gave me free stuff. How can I help you? Where do I start to find people who can help me? And what does that vetting process look like to find the right people? Yeah, that is really a good question. You know, there are a lot of platforms or websites out there where you can find freelancers one of the things that really worked out for me and even for my clients is asking their friends or business connections you know recommendations and you can you can look up their about page you can read their uh you can read their testimonial page you can also read their you know either core values and and so on and so forth but once you find that person you have to make sure that you are prepared um to ask the right questions as right. well you have to know what is non-negotiable to your business for me what is non-negotiable to me is the character i value character over competencies or skills because you can easily learn something but you cannot tell somebody to change the way how they work right because you know your character is developed from when you were born up to when you were in grade school high school college you know there's a lot there's a lot that's in it you know so it's it cannot be changed easily so like for instance if part of your core value is integrity then you need to have questions about integrity making sure that that person is honest about his or her job and virtual assistants mainly there are they don't provide the strategy for for the business they implement the strategy that the business owner already have and so there are different types of virtual assistants you know there's there's the generalist and then there's the specialist you know so you really have to make sure that you know what you're looking for before you hire one 
this was probably a month before the meeting at Warner happened. So I know that she's put her neck on the line for me. And I just basically said, I'm done. I'm out. You know what I'm saying? So later that night, she calls me and she's like, how are you going to do this to me? I put my neck on the line for you and everything. I said, Marissa, it's not about you. I said, somebody gave me the opportunity to walk into my dream right now. I can't say no. Wow. And so she hung up. I never talked to her again in my life. But at the end of, at the, end of the day, it was $40,000, health benefits, W-2 employee, taxes withheld, totally secure, or a, a possibility to maybe make $800 a, a month, ten ninety nine, but this is an opportunity to get in the door. And not everybody gets that opportunity to get in the door. So between God taking me to Morehouse and, and meeting Orlando and working with him and moving to LA with Ronnie and everything else, it all aligned to get me in the door. And I couldn't pass up the opportunity to continue to walk through that door for security, for financial stability. And look, we all have bills. We all gotta you know, take care of things. So my point to that is, if you want to work in this, there's no like set career path. There's no like steps there, book you can read. You just got to go and take every opportunity and take every risk and know that you might do that for 10 years and still not get where you want to be. Or you might, but it's like 1% make it through. And I'm one of the lucky ones. And I think the definition of luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So when I say luck, it wasn't random luck. Mm -hmm. I was preparing myself. Mm -hmm. I was working. I was learning. I was building relationships all along the way.